Hey everyone, David Aragona and Craig Milkowski are taking a look at one of two stakes races that will be run on Saturday at Oaklawn Park, the second day of their winter meeting. And we've got a couple of competitive stakes races actually, Craig, including this race six, the Ring the Bell. Uh, nine horses signed on to go the six furlong distance, older male runners. And it's a pretty competitive race. Uh, some horses who are looking to get back into form, some horses that are in form right now but might be facing not an ideal pace situation. So not the easiest puzzle to put together no uh as usual like uh oakland park we with the money they offer we get big competitive fields and this race is no different yeah, I, I didn't see the morning line yet. I'm not exactly sure who is going to go favorite in this race. That You'd imagine favoritism likely to bounce between the horses like the number six, Tejano Twist, and potentially the number seven, Rivet. Uh, both horses going out for barns that have a lot of success at Oaklawn Park, though. I think pace is going to be the big question for Tejano Twist, who seems like he's coming in with the best form, Craig. But as we take a look at the Time Form US pace projector for this race, there is not that much speed signed on. And even a few of the horses that are showing and towards the front end are not exactly confirmed front runners. So I would agree with that favors front runners flag. I'm just not exactly sure who the front runner is going to be. I agree. And uh, it probably does spell some trouble for Tejano Twist. Uh, it's something he's had to deal with many times in the past. Uh, when you scroll through his BPs, there's a lot of blue, blue fractions. He hasn't been able to win in that scenario. And unfortunately for his connections, I feel that's what he's going to find here too. The horse that's shown on the early lead is the number four top gunner. He would definitely be benefited if he's able to uh, be alone up front in this race, but he's not a horse that necessarily is always intent on getting to the front end. Usually races more of a stalker, so it'll be interesting to see how this pace plays out in the early stages. Let's go through this field in post position order, beginning with the number one, Osborne. And he is a horse that could potentially be more forwardly placed, Craig. And I say that because they put the blinkers on for the first time last time at Churchill Down. And I think it's important to note that he was much more engaged in the early stages that day, attaining better forward position than we had seen from him in some recent starts when it appeared that he was tailing off a little bit, but got back on track last time and beat a solid allowance field. The third place finisher, Angkor, has come back and run some improved speed figures since then. So Osborne definitely took a step in the right direction. We'll see if it can keep it going now. Blinker's help, then I think he's going to need that getting this rail draw. He's going to need to get out of the gate, stay up close. The improved speed figure last time was a good sign. I think his career best was a 117 back last year at Oakland Park. He hasn't quite gotten back to that yet, but this was a, definitely a positive step in that direction. Yeah, this horse has shown hints of this kind of ability on occasion, just been a little bit inconsistent. We'll see if the blinkers can get him moving in the right direction with a little better consistency. The number two is Manuelito and a horse that just feels like he's a little bit overmatched here, Craig. He's coming out of races in Indiana that are a little bit weaker, facing state bread company for much of the year, stepping out into open allowance company recently. But you can see from the race ratings next to the, next to the conditions in time form U.S., just races that... Uh, we're not uh, featuring the strength of competition that he's going to face here. And this race has a, a pre-race time form U.S. race rating of 116, uh, a speed figure he's never even come close to approaching. So he's in pretty deep. The number three is ultimate. And let's go three back in his past performances to take a look at his last stakes victory in the Iowa Sprint when he upset the field at 24 to 1 at his uh, track Prairie Meadows, where he's had a lot of success. And this felt like an improbable result at the time, Craig, beating a horse like Strobe. It was coming in for the Brad Cox barn as a big favorite, but Strobe kind of fell apart after this race, which maybe makes the victory by ultimate seem a little bit more believable in retrospect. Still, that 118 time from US speed figure kind of sticks out. This past performance is like a sore thumb, and he's not a horse that has a ton of other races to back it up, nor does he have the speed to get the right kind of trip in this race. No, it's not been pretty since that big effort, and you wonder if it took something out of him. Maybe the layoff uh, it's of almost four months will have helped a little bit, but I never like to bet a horse off just a one big number. 
the number four is Top Gunner, and he is that horse that is projected to be on the early lead of this race, and I could see it based on his races from 2022, though he missed almost all of this year, Craig, and finally came off the layoff after being away for nearly a year last time out in the Phoenix Stakes, and really just lost it at the start when he got bumped between horses, just squeezed out of position, and he was a horse that's never going to be successful, especially off a layoff, trying to come from that far back. He was also a really big price that day, and I think he's getting into a more realistic spot now, but it's the jury's still out on where he is at this point at the end of his six-year-old season after coming into some good form last year and just missing so much time. It's just questionable what kind of form he's in right now. Right. If he can run back to those numbers we see before the red line occurred, uh, he could be a contender in here for sure, particularly given the pace scenario. You could give him an excuse last time with the start, but you also have to wonder if maybe he's just not the same horse. He hasn't really had trouble breaking in the past. Though another positive that I saw, trainer John Ortiz, he doesn't really bring his horses back fully crank first time off the layoff. He has much better statistics second time. The number five is Necker Island. He's one of two Chris Hartman trainees that are drawn alongside each other in the starting gate. And Necker Island was beaten by his stablemate, Tejano Twist, last time. Uh, tried to come through some traffic and just couldn't really muster the necessary finishing kick going six furlongs. And I think the distance is the big question for this horse, Craig. I know that he won against some weaker company at Ellis over the summer going five and a half, and they've been focusing on some shorter races recently. But I remember this horse from the past. I mean, he had success going a little bit longer, being more of a one-turn mile type. He's just one for 11 in his career going this six for long distance, and he's not a horse that possesses that much early speed. So I just wonder if he's going to be able to muster the necessary finishing speed to be successful in a race that might not come back to him. No, not at all. And his form doesn't look that great. I mean, the speed figures are okay. They're a little bit below the race rating in here, but given the pace scenario, he seems to be just a player to the minor for the minor awards. Now, his stablemate, the number six, Tejano Twist, has a similar running style, but I think he's a horse that you can rely on a little bit more because he typically runs well in his races, despite the fact that you don't see any red color coded time form U.S. pace figures in his recent PPs. He's not a horse that often gets into races that feature favorable situations, but he seems to run well regardless. We'll see how slow this pace turns out to be if it is indeed slow and if that really works against him. But it's hard to knock this horse's recent form too much, Craig. He actually ran really well two back in an unfavorable pace situation at Ellis Park, trying to close wide on a day when you probably wanted to be more towards the rail. And then coming off a bit of a layoff last time, got right back into good form, beating a really strong field, including Bango, that Churchill down specialist who was able to defeat on that day, making that patented run from well off the pace. This horse is pretty reliable. We'll just see if the trip works out. Yeah, his speed figures show he shows up. I mean, he always shows up and runs his race when he does get some pace, as we see in the race at the bottom when he won the Whitmore at this track last year, ran a huge speed figure uh, up at the top. He It was a good solid pace in that one. He was able to get the job done, but it's hard to envision that scenario. And I think it's going to be really tough for him because he just doesn't seem to have the, the ability to lay closer when things slow down. The number seven is a ribbit and let's check out his most recent start at Mahoning Valley when he was the winner of the Steel Valley Sprint over his nemesis Damon's Mound who had beaten him in the two prior starts but ribbit able to turn the tables here changing up his running style a little bit um, I don't know if that was by choice because he had some trouble at the start that forced him to be further back than I expect the connections wanted him to be but it all worked out because the pace was fairly honest uh, Damon's Mound got plenty of pressure on the front end and ribbit was able to make that run from off the pace and it was just nice to see this horse take another step back in the right direction Craig because it felt like he had completely lost his form over the summer but he had run some big speed figures early in the season and maybe he's gotten back to that form now it certainly seemed like it last time. I, I don't know what happened. He obviously caught a couple sloppy tracks. Uh, he ran into a speed bias track and that monster New York Thunder, uh, the ill-fated New York Thunder. But he got back in the form last time and was a strong race. Uh, he's shown that he likes Ocon. I don't think he has to be as far back. Obviously, they found out that he could rate a little bit. But in this scenario, I would imagine he's a horse who's going to be pretty close up to the pace. 
Yeah, and I wouldn't even be surprised if Rivet's on the lead in this race because he was successful as a front runner actually at Oaklawn Park last year when he won the Bachelor and he used that style successfully after that. Um, so I wonder what they're going to do with him from a pace and dynamic standpoint, but he definitely has some versatility. The number eight is Caddo River and just a horse that uh, doesn't seem like he's in the best form right now. And even if he were doing well, I'm not sure that six furlongs would be the right distance for him. No, not at all. I mean, he's a, I guess you could say a total wild card, but it feels like if you like Caddo River, you're just kind of hoping he magically returns to form because those last four races have been pretty ugly. And the number nine, Sir Wellington, a horse that you shouldn't overlook at what could be a fair price. He definitely has some races on the go back that make him competitive in here, including some big races at Oaklawn Park last spring when he was an upset winner at 22 to one against a solid allowance field. And then when he came back at his very next start back in uh, May of last year, finishing second to Skelly, who was in fantastic form at the time. He hasn't gotten back to those speed figures since then, Craig, but he is coming back into form since uh, returning from a layoff two starts ago. So feels like maybe he's rounding back into some better races and he does have that precious tactical speed that I think is a commodity in this race. Yeah, he also draws that outside post where he can kind of see what's going on inside of him. We have him shown second on the pace projector, and I think that would be a great spot for him. His speed figures are moving in the right direction back towards career best, so he's a contender. Yeah, we both have the number nine, Sir Wellington, in the mix as we throw up our picks for this race. Uh, just going in different directions on the top end, Craig. Um, I think we both respect the number seven, Rivet. You put him on top. He definitely is the horse that's coming in with those speed figures that would put him in the winner's circle. It's just a matter of whether or not you can trust him to repeat that last race. Yeah, I trust Steve Asmussen. He seems to know where these horses belong. Uh, he was a horse last spring. I thought maybe would be a horse we saw in the Allen Jerkins. He was that good. Uh, he wasn't pointed in that direction, and it seems like it was the right move. Got back to form, and it's a speed figure guy. He's just the fastest horse in the field. And I put the number one Osborne on top, again, having not seen the morning line yet, hoping that he's a decent price in here. Um, just a horse that had shown ability. He was a uh, seven-length winner in fast time at Oaklawn Park last year, kind of went off form after that, but it seemed like the blinkers woke him up last time, and I'm hoping they can get him a little bit more engaged than he had been in prior starts, especially breaking from the rail in this race. So the number one Osborne for me and the number seven Rivet for Craig in race six at Oaklawn on Saturday, the ring, the bell stakes. Good luck if you're playing the races this week weekend.